Hello and welcome to episode number 52 of the TW2020 Challenge Run. This is the first Smackdown for season 2, and it's the first Smackdown after SummerSlam as we begin their build to the No Mercy pay-per-view. It is also the second night of the Superstar Shake-Up, where more superstars from Raw will show up here tonight like the Smackdown ones did on Raw, and the Superstar Shake-Up and the new rosters will be finalised. And also, after Smackdown, will be the first episode of the Mae Young Classic. Without any further ado, let's jump straight into the shows. Adam Pearce comes to the ring, and he's got the two Smackdown tag team titles with him. It's like last night, or not, last Sunday at SummerSlam Night 2, it was Death From Above, The Usos, and The New Day. They put the three teams, put it all on the line to fight for these two tag team titles. And Death From Above ended up winning. But it was not all good news for them because Lince Dorado he did something. I can point he did if he broke his metatarsal. And he's going to be out for over a month. Which means Biggin had to vacate the tag team titles. And then he puts them on the floor. He says, well, now. As I am the WWE official, um, I've been granted an upgrade to become the new SmackDown general manager because of all the work I did as an official running the shows. It's sort of in the background when Paige and Samoa Joe were sort of had other things on their mind. So I'm going to be the official SmackDown general manager. My first port of call is to make a eight team tag team tournament here on SmackDown to crown the new tag team champions. It will be. The Usos will face Dabakeo and Obakanu at the Hoss House. Um, Apollo Crews and Shelton Benjamin, the former World Tag Champions of VIP Nation, will face Path of the Dragon, also coming over from Raw. Street Profits will face the Peak of Physique. And Dolph Ziggler and Robert Roode will face Drew Gulak and Chad Gable. And the winning teams... Will fight the tough. The two finalists will face off at No Mercy for the vacant SmackDown tag team titles, and that first match is coming up now. And that first match is right now. The Usos defeat the Hoss House, Stabakato and Obakanu. Jimmy Uso pins Obakanu with a double super kick. Sixty six and sixty four for the Usos. Twenty nine for Kanu. Thirty three for Kato, and the Usos advance to the semi finals of the tournament. Quick match. Shayna Baszler, the former Raw Women's Champion, is over here on SmackDown now. And her debut match is against Nikki Cross, and she beats her in 11 minutes. She passes out with the Kirifuda Clutch. And Alexa would throw in the towel like Nikki did for her at SummerSlam. And then this segment is gets a 69. Alexa throws in the towel on Nikki. But she passes out in the clutch, and Shayna Baszler sort of walks out like, yeah, my, my job is done here. Alexa gets into the ring and she attacks her best friend. She sort of picks up the towel and sort of shoves it in a shoves it in her mouth down her throat. I sort of like fucking take that bitch. And she's shouting about how Nikki ruined Alexa's big opportunity. And how now everyone thinks Alexa was a joke because she couldn't get it the job done in that fight pit at SummerSlam. But no matter. Because she's always has a she always has a way to ruin the careers of her enemies as well. And then out comes Nia Jax. And Nia Jax picks up the key cross. She drops a big leg drop. And then she hits a Samoan drop through the table. And then she hugs Alexa. So Alexa has another best friend. And this is the first time Nia Jax has done anything of any use in this save. And she's going to be sort of the muscle for Alexa Bliss. And Alexa and Nikki, no more. Alexa did not appreciate having the towel thrown in on her at SummerSlam. Kurt and Raquel got a promo backstage. And Dakota says that she had to go to Raw um, on Monday to shut up J Flo and they're whining because of the thing saying, oh, you only beat two of us, there's still more of us that need a title opportunity. But they know there are other, there are other challenges over here on their show, not just on Raw. But it's, there's not really anyone over here that they think will be a real challenge to them. That's when the Iconics, who come over from Raw in the shake-up, walk into frame, and they say, well, we're here on SmackDown now, mate. And those titles, they're practically made for us. So, if you're looking for challenges, look no further than us, mate. And Dakota says next week, 
She'll accept the challenge. Her and Raquel will gladly welcome the Iconics back to SmackDown. And the, the beating that they'll give them will surely be Iconic. So, just a nice little shake-up of the women's tag divisions. Iconics are everywhere on SmackDown now. And they're going to get a title shot next week. Because they asked so nicely. VIP Nation come to the ring. They say that right now, the former Raw Tag Team Champions Apollo Crews and Joe Benjamin have a chance to regain some tag title gold right here on SmackDown. And of course, the almighty Bobby Lashley will be keeping his eye out. Because whether it be someone who followed him over here from Raw, or a fresh new opponent that was always on SmackDown, the steps up to face him for the United States Championship at no mercy. He welcomes all challenges, and he'll put them all down with his devastating full Lashley. The tag team title tournament match is Apollo and Shelton against Path of the Dragon. Um, Apollo and Shelton get the win in 11-17. Shelton pins Humberto. He gets a 59, 61 for Cruz, 51 for Humberto, and a 48 for Tozawa. And I think, actually, because it hasn't got the story involved, I think it's over that or the actual tournament did help it get boost. Which is nice to know that like I'd have to put them all in the storyline. They just have to be in the tourney and then they'll sort of gain the benefits of being involved in the storyline. Sasha and Bailey come out. Sasha says she cuts a promo about her and Bailey outsmarted Paige at SummerSlam. And even though Bailey couldn't get the job done, she won with that money in the bank briefcase so she could be there when she knew Bailey would slip up. And she did just that at SummerSlam. And then they sort of Bailey sort of looks at her like, What the fuck, bro? Well, why are you slagging me off like that? And then Sasha says the entire SmackDown Women's Division will bow down and kiss her feet because it's boss time. And then Bailey sort of does the, the, the air bowing, she pretends to bow down to Sasha. And then she, when Sasha turns her back, she sort of looks at the title that she lost. And she's very angry at some of the words that Sasha has said about her here tonight, about how she um, couldn't get the job done. She slipped up. And how Sasha was basically her insurance policy and the real star of the team. But there is a match. Sasha and Bailey defeat Sugar Rush in 7.41. Sasha submits Candy Floss. 32 for Zaya, 39 for Candy Floss, 67 for Bailey, and a 68 for Sasha. That's actually pretty good, to be fair. Braun Strowman, his theme music hits, and the former Universal Champion comes out. He's on a mission because he's not very happy that he lost to Daniel Bryan at SummerSlam. He says he's pissed off and that Daniel Bryan will get his. But now, someone, anyone, needs to come out here and get these hands. Oh, basking his glory. For he is limitless. Keith Lee comes to the ring. He sort of does his work. He has his proper his proper theme song playing because, of course, even if you do want to change it at a later point because you have to, because you haven't got the rights, but that initial time you should have the actual song so it hits harder. He grabs a microphone. He's like, Greetings and salutations, Mr. Strowman. I would introduce myself, but I know that you remember me from our meeting in the Royal Rumble match earlier this year. And then everyone's like, Yeah, I remember being the one who helped get you eliminated. And Keith's like, shh, now, now, Braun, I'm not here to fight, at least not tonight, for tonight is my first night here on SmackDown. I just wanted to let you know that I have arrived, and I ask you to bask in my glory. And he sort of does the pose, he shuts his eyes and points at himself, Braun goes for a cheap shot, but Keith Lee, he knows this is coming, he ducks it, and then he ducks underneath, he bounces off the other rope. Braun turns around and he gets pounced by, by Keith Lee and he goes, he retreats under the ring and then Keith Lee shares the ring all to himself. He does his poses and the SmackDown universe is basking in his glory. In an 84 rated segment, Braun was apparently a real star and he benefited from a hot catchphrase. <clears throat> and of course, real WWE had to go ahead and blow up my spot here by doing this on Raw literally last night. So that fuck fucking annoyed me because it's my spot and no one else is allowed to do this other than me. Everyone knows I'm better than them. P 
peak of physique come to the ring. Oof, they didn't do very good. I rated these just on because there was no. This is no void. Not really a storyline segment. So I decided to give them mics and see what they could do. Not great, apparently. They say that they saw that their names were in the official bracket to crown the new SmackDown Tag Team Champions. And that may be bittersweet, though, because whilst they will win the titles, when they wear them around their waists, they'll cover up their sweet abs. And they both start counting abs and shit. They're like, well, to get ready for that match next week, we want a match right now. To Big Tony, Big Tony Nice, the premier athlete, wants a match here on SmackDown. Anyone in the back that comes out and wants a fight. And he should have should have been more careful what he wished for, because out comes the big dog. And he toys with Tony Nese for five minutes before ending him with a spear. He gets an 86. 45 for Tony Nese. After the match, big dog is celebrating. And the Firefly Funhouse pops up on the Titantron. Bray says that at SummerSlam, he enjoyed his chance to play with the new Roman Reigns. And that he fought the Superman right out of him. Because, of course, John Cena was the embodiment of Superman and Roman change, so that's what he popped up in the ring. Now, he wants to, and then Roman's like, oh man, shut up. And then we sort of get an interaction, like, I know it's going to be pre-taped, so it's going to be quite awkward for Bray's end, but where Roman's talking to him, he's like, I'm tired of your little mind games. They ain't going to work on me, chief. You've got your side, I've got mine. And at SummerSlam, I saw the fiend run away like a little bitch. So here it is, Bray. I may be different. I'm no Superman. I'm just a man. Which is more than I can say for you. Unless you want to prove me wrong, come face me at no mercy. One on one. Me and you. Man versus man. And Bray laughs. He says that Roman will wish he was still Superman. Because he accepts. Man versus man. No mercy. Roman Reigns. Bray Wyatt. We're doing this again. God fucking damn it, I've done the same shit again. <laughs> Good job I'm covering this up anyway. And now the storyline doesn't advance either, that's brilliant, okay. AJ Styles promo. He says that the most important draft pick has arrived. He's back on SmackDown, the house that AJ Styles built. And he's interrupted by Angel Gaza. And Gaza says he knows AJ's been ducking him, but he's also here on SmackDown. So that luck has run out. And AJ laughs, he's like, ducking you? Why would I be ducking you? And Gaza's like, oh, you see, I never forgave you for when you took my spot in that fatal four-way to become the number one contender for the Derby title. And then we had that match on Raw that you beat me in because Andrade was there. But Andrade's not here tonight, so it's just me and you. And I want my fair one-on-one -on -one match against the phenomenal AJ Styles. AJ agrees, they have their match. Gets a 59, of course, because I didn't put the fucking storyline because I put the wrong person in the segment. It was the same person that it was at SummerSlam, so... This fucking annoys me because now it's going to get a shit rating for the show. <sighs> a. Let me go over the other draft picks for SmackDown. That couldn't quite get on the show this week. Including Rey Mysterio. He's back on his show. Smackdown. Um, Again just because Jeff Hardy went one way. So I sort of saw Rey and him as counterparts. So I sent Rey over here. Um, Lana and Jacob Fatu are coming over to Smackdown. As well as Bianca Belair. And of course as announced last week on Raw. The Beast. Brock Lesnar and his advocate Paul Heyman. Hopefully this fucking segment can save this piece of shit show because that 59 is really, really fucking annoying me. Because it's, it's my own fault, I should have checked. But, meh. Oh, that's, that promo got a 70, by the way, the AJ Garza one. Anyway, yes, yes, yes. The new Universal Champion, Daniel Bryan, comes out with Drew Gulak and Chad Gable. He says that he may have built up a career as an underdog. But even he thought that Braun Strowman may have been too much. But last Saturday... He proved more than ever before that nothing is bigger than the heart of Daniel Bryan. Yes, 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 you deserve it, etc. He says that he's happy to get the championship off of the monster and back onto a wrestler. He promises he will be a universal champion to be proud of and put his heart on the line every time he defends it. And then they sort of all celebrate. Yes, yes, a lovely feel-good moment. 
Gulak and Gable hug him, they leave and let Brian soak in the, the, the crowd all to himself. Yes, yes, yes. But then he's blindsided from behind by returning King Corbin. Corbin picks up Daniel Bryan, he leaves him out of an end of days. He sort of crouches over him. He grabs a microphone and he, he's like, Congratulations, Daniel. And he drops the mic and he leaves the ring as Brian is laid out in the middle of the ring to end the show. <sighs> Not as bad as I thought it was going to be. I'm still losing pop. I shouldn't have. That should have been a fucking good show because that main event would have banged if I would have put the actual fucking storyline involved. But... Okay, right. But what matters more than the 75 is what you thought of the show. So do let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I won't. Oh, no, 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 I won't. See you next time for Raw. Well, I will, hopefully. But we have another show to get through today. The first episode of the May Young Classic 2020. And that will be starting right now. And here we go, note one of the Mae Young Classic 2020. Um, we open up with a video package for the first match of the tournament, basically going over who the two women are and why they want to win. Um, Rain, we go over her history as a wrestler, sort of like an independent wrestling legend. And Alex Gracia, who is like the up-and-comer, who needs this opportunity to try and get her foot in the door at a big company. And they have their match, the first match of the tournament. Scores A, 21. And Rain defeated Alex Grace here in 10 minutes with an acid rain. She gets a 30, Alex a 26. So that was the right result. Apparently according to the ratings. And I thought I fixed the... No, the... the, the oh well, never mind. I thought having Triple H still at ringside watching Get, get rid of the note about them not having any investment in the match, but apparently not, so F. Same thing, Zoe Lucas and Ashley Vox, two up-and-comer, up-and-coming women in the tournament, looking to make their mark here in WWE. They go over their, their background, and Zoe Lucas, of course, being from the UK, Ashley Vox from the America. They have the second match of the tournament, gets a 22. Ashley Vox defeats Zoe Lucas. In 9.38, she gets a 34, so we are 23. And yeah, so they both advance, so Rain and Ashley Vox both advance, so that will be the match in the... Is it quarterfinals next? 32. No, they'll be round of 16, yeah. So it'll be Ashley Vox and Rain from that end of the draw. Let me jump to the other side of the bracket. We, we I'm doing um the first two and the last two. Matches available each each week instead of just going in order to sort of sort of fix it up a bit. So the last match on the the bracket was Skylar Moon and Taylor Hendricks. They they go over their backgrounds and they have their match. Fourteen this one gets. Um, Taylor Hendricks defeats Skylar Moon in eight minutes for Peacemaker. She gets a twenty. Taylor a nineteen. And the injury is why I decided to have Taylor Hendricks win because I don't want to have. Uh, be hampered in the next round through injury and yeah it just seems like a safer move to put the healthy one through so Taylor Hendricks ends the Mae Young Classic dreams of Skylar Moon in the first round main event um, Zartara who I believe is actually a Mae Young Classic veteran she's actually been in one before against two, someone who has to be considered one of the favourites to win the whole thing in Jordan Grace 22 the match gets Jordan pins Zatara in 13 with a fall from Grace. Jordan gets a 34, a 21 for Zatara. And yes, yeah, so she advances to face... It literally just happened, Connor. It literally just happened. Taylor Hendricks in the round of 16. And so that'll be the last match. I'll put the brackets up at the end of every Mayan Classic episode. So that's the end of that show. The show rating gets us a 23. They're not really going to get very good ratings because of... But they're B shows, so it doesn't really matter, so it's fine. What matters more is what you thought, of course, this and SmackDown. So now do let me know what you thought in the comments below. And I'll see you next time for episode 53, which will be Monday Night Raw. See you then.